Welcome back uh, to Piers Morgan Uncensored, uh, rather rare, in fact, unique uh, work from home edition of uh, Piers Morgan Uncensored because I am currently suffering from COVID, but we'll man up and crack on. I'm with Professor Neil Ferguson. Uh, Neil, I want to talk to you about uh, two wars. Let's start with Israel and Gaza and what is going on there. I, I've spoken a lot in the last two months about it, feeling a real moral quandary about this. In the sense, I feel that Israel is absolutely morally justified to defend itself from future attacks of the kind we saw on October the 7th. And if it has a duty to defend its people, uh, given that Hamas has said they want to keep doing it again and again and again, and they're a terror group who will clearly do that. Um, but when you see the scale of what is going on in Gaza, the displacement of well over a million people now, the, the, the levelling of most of northern Gaza, and now they're heading into the south to do the same, and the increasingly shocking death toll of civilians, and in particular children, in a place where half the population are children. You know, I ha I'm beginning to have, like most people who who defend Israel's right to defend itself, a real moral qualm about the scale of, of their retribution, which is how many people see it. What do you think? Well, I don't think it's just retribution. I think it's clear uh, that Israel can no longer coexist with Hamas in control of Gaza. Uh, if anybody doubted that, then those doubts were surely dispelled on October the 7th with the most hideous scenes of violence against Jews since the Holocaust. Indeed, it seemed to me that what Hamas were really trying to communicate was their intention to reenact the Holocaust. And I think every one of us, regardless of whether we're Jewish or not, has a moral obligation to ensure that there never is another Holocaust. And those who threaten to wipe Israel uh, from the map uh, are intending nothing less than a second Holocaust. So the issue is, can Hamas uh, be destroyed, as it should be, at, at a, an acceptable cost. Uh, it's the same question that had to be asked uh, when British and American forces were uh, fighting an insurgency uh, in Iraqi cities. It's the same question that had to be asked when uh, it was Islamic State uh, that was being wiped out. And since these uh, organizations specialize in concealing themselves in densely populated urban centers, uh, it's inconceivable that they can be defeated at zero cost. Uh, to civilians. Uh, now, the problem for Israel is that it's damned at whatever it does. If it, uh, if it moves civilians out of the way, it's accused of ethnic cleansing. If it doesn't, it's hypocritically accused uh, of genocide. Uh, so this is a, a very, very difficult, indeed well-nigh impossible situation. And it's not made any easier when the international community and indeed the US government leans on Israel uh, to stop or pause or cease fire, because that only allows Hamas to regroup and it almost certainly prolongs the conflict. I want to add another point, Piers. This is not just about Gaza. It's also about the other areas where Israel is under attack. Uh, it's about the unstable situation in the West Bank. Uh, it's about the possibility that at any moment Hezbollah could launch a massive bombardment of rockets and missiles uh, from Lebanon in, uh, into Israel. And, and there's more because there are also all kinds of uh, uh, forces in Syria that bear ill will uh, towards Israel. The war has the potential to escalate and grow in multiple ways. We're in a kind of lull at the moment, incredible though it may seem to say that. And my fear is that at some point in the coming weeks, we'll see the next phase of the war a new front will be opened up and Israel will be fighting not only in Gaza, but potentially elsewhere uh, for its very survival. And I want to underline to your viewers, given the very small size uh, of Israel and its vulnerability in a neighborhood where it's in almost entirely surrounded by hostile forces, its very survival is at stake. Uh, so I think it's very important, particularly for people in Britain and the US, not to be swayed by the very clever propaganda that comes out uh, of Gaza, often uh, Hamas crafted, often Hamas authorized, which is designed to make you think there's some moral equivalence here, uh, because there really can't be moral equivalence when Israel is retaliating for the appalling attacks of October the 7th. And that is a just war that is being fought right now. Is war ever clean? No. Are there civilian casualties in war? Nearly always, particularly in modern times. That's the reality 
And I'm afraid uh, we have more to face of this harsh reality because this war is only like, likely to escalate in the coming weeks. How does it end? I mean, you're a historian. You, you have covered many conflicts and wars. Um, I, I just worry about whether Israel has an end game here that doesn't just involve, in many of their eyes, in the leadership, just taking over Gaza, for example, occupying it completely going forward. Do you see anything other than the, that happening? Well, there's no great appetite uh, within the Israeli military for an occupation of Gaza because they have bitter memories of, uh, of what that was like before and indeed what other occupations the, the Israeli army, the Israeli defense forces have, have carried out in the past. But who has a better idea at this point? It's a little difficult to imagine uh, the dust settling and a new uh, force emerging to take the place of Hamas that isn't just as bad. It's not like the Palestinian Authority is about to be put back in charge of Gaza. Everybody knows mm. that Palestinian Authority is an oxymoron. Those two words no longer meaningfully belong together. There are some other options which I think need to be considered. Uh, after all, what's the United Nations for if it's not to send blue helmets into dangerous territories where the alternative is ongoing conflict. And that seems to me to be the kind of thing that should be under much more serious discussion at the moment, internationalizing Gaza. Uh, that seems the kind of uh, end game that would make much more sense to me than an Israeli occupation mm. that would almost certainly just become uh, a succession of, of terrorist attacks and, and countermeasures.